Tonight we have a story about a North Georgia man made homeless by his clash with local government. Good evening. Thanks for watching News Channel 9 at 6. I'm Calvin Snead. I'm Kim Chapman. Even though he owns land valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars, he's not allowed to live on it. News Channel 9's Alyssa Sparato has the story. Alyssa. Kim Calvin, the contest between Lonnie Stubblefield and Catoosa County went back and forth for more than a decade. But in July, the county dropped the hammer, forcing Stubblefield off his land, bulldozing the historic Stubblefield home and presenting the now homeless man with a bill for that demolition. 1198 Bandy Road is the only address Lonnie Stubblefield has ever called home. His family settled in this quiet part of Catoosa County in 1837. His ancestors were leaders in the Old Stone Church, and life at the family home bustled with visitors, including some of the best-known religious leaders of the day. During the Civil War, D.L. Moody stayed here. They had, uh, must have been like a wagon train because they were taking a wagon, they would talk, take Dale Moody to the battlefield every day. A few years later, Anthony Showalter made a stop at the home and while there, wrote a hymn that would become one of the most beloved church songs in history. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Lonnie Stubblefield's memories are all that's left after Catoosa County bulldozed the old home place in July. The findings from years of court documents showed Lonnie Stubblefield's property as rotten and unsalvageable, unfit for human habitation, and unlawful dumping ground. They call it excessive hoarding. This is what they call it. That's just the term. Okay. Would you have gotten help if they would have offered it to you? It was never offered. But if it was, would you? Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like you have a hoarding problem? Probably. They don't understand that it's an illness. And so what Mr. Stubblefield needed was treatment, how to address his tendency to hoard. And a gradual um, helping him make decisions about what to get rid of. Going in and cleaning it up doesn't change anything. Jane Elmore is president of the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Elmore sees Catoosa County's actions as a reflection on the lack of education. She sees it all the time. You think that this case in Catoosa County is one where it failed a person with mental illness? Yes. And that happens every day all over the country. Catoosa County is not special. They aren't alone. They're what people do. Catoosa County's own administrator, James Davis, says the county had no other choice. As for Lonnie Stubblefield, he feels they crossed the line. Do you feel like Catoosa overstepped its boundaries with you? Absolutely. They stepped on my simple rights. Lonnie Stubblefield owns more than 50 acres, and based on estimates from online land auction companies, it's worth $200,000 to $300,000. But when Catoosa bulldozed the home and hauled off all that debris, a process that took more than two weeks, they ran up costs of $85,000, which they are charging back to Stubblefield. That lien will come from any proceeds the owner would get from that sale. You wow. know, this, this kind of brings up, I, I guess, eyebrows. It kind of raises eyebrows a Absolutely. little bit. Absolutely. Rather than prosecute him, did anybody in Catoosa County ever try to help him? Right, and Calvin, that's a great question. Now, we asked repeatedly for an on-camera interview with Catoosa County officials, but they declined. Um, however, Catoosa Zoning Administrator James Davis did tell me today that, quote, Adult Protective Services visited Lonnie several times at my request. They said he could make his own decisions and there was nothing they could do. I tried every possible thing I could think of to help him proceed before we live with that demolition. Now, he is allowed to live on that property, but they told him if they see him hoarding again, he will have to leave. So he just stays on the property. That's all he has. That's what we're told. All right. Melissa, thank you. Good story. Appreciate it.